Hi, welcome to I Tried to Eat My Phone. I am Karen Jaworski and I am joined today by Mike and Todd and we were in a, well, let's, we shouldn't preface too much because people will expect a lot of us, but we were in an improv group together. <laughs> in college. Your least interesting, least funny friends right now. And then <laughs> we are low enough to we, where it can yeah. only be entertaining from there. We were landscapers together at some point. <laughs> at Four Seasons? <laughs> we were. I put the eye. No. <laughs> I was noticing your bear stuff in the background, and I I just want you to know that <laughs> I'm parenting right because <laughs> we uh, in our family our thing is lately we leave sticky notes for each other wherever we're working or doing school from home or whatever, and of course the sticky notes for John always go in the bathroom because um, that's where he does <laughs> most of his time. But so I put sticky notes in there and I noticed the other day, Bridget put a sticky note in there for him and it said, you're my dicka. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> winning. <laughs> it's like my 10 year old just, yeah, that's just really like, that's really yeah, it's like, dad, I'm, I'm making you the knock worst. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, does that mean swear give me the finger a lot or <laughs> what does that really mean i mean i don't know it could be <laughs> you a lot you swear <laughs> <laughs> um uh, so a first first question to get us started what what's a guaranteed laugh for you like what 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 do you go to either YouTube or just in general, or you think about that's like a guaranteed laugh, something that that cracks you up every time. Chris Farley. Yeah. Right. Guaranteed laugh. I'd say Farley is yeah. Farley's probably number one. Yeah. Like yeah. like for me, I, I would go with like most um old school physical-ish comedy, like mm -hmm physical comedians and they're yeah. gonna get like a laugh out of me almost like almost every time like yeah you know like because that's because i mean not like i have a soft sense of humor like i'm pretty basic like and i just find that stuff funny i find but i mean it doesn't have to be um old per se like even like zach galifianakis like between two ferns like, you know, mm -hmm. so is dumb and soft for it and love it like like it's just like all that kind of stuff too. I don't know. that's fine you, you know i invariably i'll hear my wife like laughing you know from like across the house and i'll, I'll walk over and say what are you what are you laughing at and she'll like turn the phone around and it'll be a key and peel oh, video skit and, and then i'll just sit there and i'll watch like you know 20 minutes worth of key and peel and i'll just We'll yeah. watch it together and like die. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I mean, every skit they do is yeah. And the YouTube algorithm, you know, is amazing, of course, because it'll just <laughs> be down the rabbit holes. Which, by the way, I'm listening to Rabbit Hole. That's right. <laughs> New York Times. Se separate issue. But like, I was watching like the other day. I was watching like um uh the, the what's the comedian from SNL that um uh, that does Barry? What's the guy? What's the actor from? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, um, I always confuse them with both. But anyway, yeah. But like, yeah. they'll just show you every vi like next. To, like, if you watch one video, like you watch one key and key video, key uh, key and video, they'll watch you. They'll watch another one, another one, another one. And yeah, I'll spend like nine hours watching like the same, you know, Martin Short videos or key and key or whatever. That's so Martin Short. That's that's what what always makes me like hunched over laughing is Jiminy Glick. <laughs> that, and that is such comedy gold. <laughs> like, <laughs> I came across a reel of like his worst insults to, to people he interviewed. And it was, I was like <laughs> snorting. Like, he's so great. He's like, <laughs> talks about Jerry Seinfeld and he says something about, um he imitates him and he's like 
<laughs> something about, do you ever notice? <laughs> and then he's like, that's hilarious. <laughs> if, pe if people that's cared. Funny, like he's so, he's been around for so long they can get away with that. Like just like blatantly ripping on these like established people and make it like yeah. constantly, which is awesome. Like, <laughs> Didn't care like he's like well, what's what are they gonna do <laughs> well and they love it and recognizes them right. you know like even jerry seinfeld's like oh my god like martin short is making fun of me this is great <laughs> you know i that that is definitely i feel like such a fantastic like there's it has all the perfect components of a great character and great comedy and like a, a wonderful use for it so that's <laughs> That's always my go-to on yeah, that Bill one. Hader. Bill Hader is the guy. Bill Hader. Bill Hader is the guy. Like I, was listen, like I was listening yes. to, um, I was listening to a podcast, um, the Armchair Expert with um, Dak Shepard. And oh, Bill, yeah. And he was so bummed out because he gets bummed out because someone will make a, like, a hilarious, stupid sophomore joke. And he gets bummed out that he didn't think of that joke. <laughs> He's like, that's so good. <laughs> it's over. It's over. No one's ever going to think of a joke that hilarious anymore. Forget it. <laughs> it's like the dumbest. It's not like some, like, like back to the sophomore thing, right? It's not some like hugely complex movie that's hilarious. It's, right. some, it's some dumb comment. It's some dumb comment that someone made in passing. Right. Hilarious. That's, that's I do. I've seen an interview with Bill Hader where I, my, one of my favorite things he does is the Keith Morrison impression. Oh. Um, and because he's so good at it. And he oh. there's an interview he does where he talks about doing that. And he said it was just something I was doing around the house. <laughs> and, and my wife was like, you should you should do that. <laughs> and I just thought, but that's what and, and he and in in I think in the same interview or a different interview, he says, in my house when we grew up, we always did voices. Like everybody in the family, when they would tell a story, they would do the voices. Like, so my parents would be like, you know, it wouldn't be like, well, we saw Bill at the grocery store. It would be like, well, we saw Bill, <laughs> Bill at the grocery store, you know, and like, <laughs> and I was like, that's, that's the house I grew up in too. It was like, oh, Carol was like, well, you know how I feel about that. You know, I mean, it was just always, you had. Right. These moments of voices so you could project what it was what was happening like the, the voice yeah oh the keith morrison can do person is uh, unbelievable like, yeah and <laughs> and the, okay so that's what i was thinking of so i was watching those videos those youtube videos and whatever youtube's algorithm had me down a rabbit hole of um bill Hader breaking character on snl skits where he starts laughing <laughs> which like the Californians. Yeah. The, California, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the fact that this person is just laughing at himself is like hilarious. To <laughs> laughing out loud. And Lance's like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, I don't even know what I'm laughing at. I'm laughing at a guy that's <laughs> laughing at himself. I don't know. I don't know. Like I honestly during our time in Irish accent, I mean, I I know there were times where we broke, but it, it is it's so tough to maintain sometimes oh. because you guys would do stuff where i would just be like oh crap i have to like turn around because i you yeah. know or it would be stuff that we had done in practice and even if you didn't do it exactly the same way on stage i would recall what yeah. you did in practice and start laughing so um yeah that always yeah. that was tough to maintain two straight hours of us just laughing at each other hysterically. And I think, Karen, you and I talk about that, like you get on stage and sometimes the stuff wouldn't be funny, but you'd be like, no, it is funny. But you're thinking <laughs> about like the two hours that you talked about it and about like something that they said like a week ago. It's hilarious. Like, I still think one of our best skits was when we acted out a practice because like so many of our friends would say, Oh yes. Like this is the you know it, you you must have the the craziest time for two or three hours on Sunday nights, and so we I think you wrote the skit here, and where it was like <laughs> you know we we pretended we were at practice and we would just like talk through you know what, what we were what we were gonna do for our next show. What if Mike wore a clown costume and he just 
He just runs on the stage and he just dumps some water on someone. <laughs> like, no, one, no one bothered to ask what relevance that had to anything that was happening. <laughs> what if, but what if? I mean, what if there was just a, like a beer mug full of water and Mike just right in the middle of a skit just dumped it on someone's head for no reason? <laughs> what, what about that? There was such a process of osmosis kind of like where it was like we just it just grew from whatever we were. I mean, it, we, that was my favorite thing was Sunday nights. We would just come together and everyone would just talk about their weekend. And like, <laughs> Willie would always kind of act out his weekend, like <laughs> yeah. animated. And, but it was so, it was so much fun. Like we, I mean, I don't, I always felt like it wasn't, we like, what did we do tonight? <laughs> like. But it was always fodder for what we came up with. But yeah, um, at the end of the, the practice, and we're like, all right, we've got these six things. It was just like, I don't know, we just bounced around each other's brains for mm hours -hmm. and hours. You know, like, yeah, and it would come out, to, it, would, it would end up with something later. But at the time, you, you don't know what it is. Yeah. Where, where did both of you get your sense of humor from? Like, if you could pinpoint, you know, parents or what? I think. Well, so I, you know, I have that kind of sarcasm, right? So I think the sarcasm comes from probably my mom's side of the family. My, uh -huh. my grandfather was pretty sarcastic. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, my, my dad was just, he was always, he's always been pretty quick witted. You know, he's just been a, a guy who will, he's just very conversational. He's a salesman, you know, he's just, he's good at, he's good at talking. So I think that's probably where, where I get it. So it's sort of the, you know, being able to respond quickly. That's from my dad's side. My mom's side is more of the, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the sarcasm, like you're not totally sure if, if he's being, you know, completely honest and rude or if he's just joking. Like that's, that's probably, that's me. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Todd? Good question. I think I get it mostly from my dad and my dad's side of the family who are just kind of, you know, easygoing, pretty much kind of, kind of goofballs. Like, you know, mm -hmm. right? and not that there's anything like deep there, but it's just like, just kind of being a goofball. And, and I was going to say, like, I think, like, I know for Mikey, like one of the things I think makes him funny is like, is this ability to like, like, look at other people and just kind of like dive into whatever's happening there and to just like, let's just laugh about it, right? And so like, yeah. I think to be in any kind of troupe, and maybe that's different than like stand-up comedy, but mm -hmm. kind of troupe like part of it is like, you just have to like, kind of be willing to be like, I don't know, let's just see, like, let's just see what ridiculousness comes of this every <laughs> time. And if it does, then, you know, you know, whatever. <laughs> Mikey, was telling, Mikey was telling a story um, tonight to his daughter and to me about how he purposely sunk the Kavanaugh boat at the Fisher Regatta. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you mean what? this effort like you actually like what's that? This this took effort you actually like <laughs> did think, stuff to sink the boat? We the, the boat was already like leaking considerably and so we <laughs> had to help it along. So we I brought that I, I brought my story. I brought my hammer out. So we actually won our first race. It was only like three of us in the whole dorm. Kevin had a little canoe. I mean, that's it. I mean, we we were we were half assing it the whole way, you know, for this thing. So we had this little canoe, there were like three of us on it, and that thing just was taken on water, like you like you would not believe. It was just up to the brim when we we finished our first race. So we were like, all right, we know we're not gonna we're not gonna finish the second race. So we're not, we're certainly not going to win. And this was last year as a male dorm on top of it. So we're like, well, you know, to hell with it. Let's just sink the damn thing. And so we, we let these other, you know, whoever we we're racing against they <laughs> are out into the lake and we kind of drifted out there. We're taking on water. We stand up and we go long live the gnaw. And we just start like, I had my grandfather's hammer with me. I brought it out on the boat and I just, <laughs> On the boat trying to put like bigger holes in it so we'd sink the thing and, and then and then like as like i'm i'm 
swiping down at it, right? And then I bring my arm back up to hit it again and the hammer goes like flying out of my hand because it was all wet. <laughs> my hammer, my grandfather's hammer, like this family heirloom is at the bottom of whatever St. Joseph Lake. <laughs> where, where, it's, where it still resides? Did you get it? I can only assume. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> for body yeah, right. I can't imagine what else is the body if they way. found a body then they also probably found a murder weapon yeah. <laughs> like they're probably like is this a murder weapon no it's just a 95 or 94 <laughs> sabotaging his own boat that was funny he had nine course lights in him it's cool <laughs> Oh, that's a great story. I love that. Yeah, he's told that story. He's told that story tonight. Like we're just hanging on the table with like, his daughters, and they're like, "Why are you? Why are you?" Not <laughs> I was just gonna ask, what was their reaction? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, they think they got a healthy, yeah, appreciation for their dinner. <laughs> but like, that's the whole point. Like, he's just like, I don't know. We were there. <laughs> we're just going all in. We're just, we're just going all in for the comedy. <laughs> I assume most of them are personal entertainment. <laughs> you're like, yeah. We're like, I mean, we're out here, yeah. right? It's well, like, I mean, you know, maybe I'm on a Sunday. We're, you know. Because it's like you said, like, I think the three of them thought it was hilarious, and pretty much everyone else involved in Vergata. <laughs> <laughs> like, furious, like, absolutely furious. Uh, like, I forgot know, about that. The Fisher guys <laughs> were not. I forgot. How, much, how much do I wish there had been, like, you know, TikTok and Instagram back then to have like a video of you two. I just want to see someone on the sidelines being like, dude, check out what this guy is. Just picture you with like a hammer. Like, what, like, what the just, hell is this guy oh, doing? The bowl with an old hammer? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> how, how do you feel like humor has played a role in your life? Like, where do you impart humor where when you need it? Like, Work, family, otherwise, like, what, what, where, what have been times where you've relied on it? I, I'd say yes, <laughs> to <laughs> all of them, right? It's like it's it's so important. It's it's important to you know break the ice with with really anyone. It's important to you know create some sort of interjection. You know, it's so it's amazing to me as I kind of think back on my like my professional career and the things that I really enjoyed doing when I was when I was growing up we were yeah I, I really loved our improv troupe I loved writing I loved um I love I love journalism too and now I'm in a position where I'm not doing really any of those things and yet I'm practicing all of those things all of the time so if I'm up like leading a strategic planning session with you know a, a board or you know talking to a group of people or presenting on something I'm, it's all about, it's all about improv. It's all about trying to entrust. It's all about the, you know, the, the, you know, kind of preparing from a, a writing perspective. It's like, it's all of those things. So, I mean, I guess yeah. the, you know, the, the humor part of it is, is important just because you, you need to like, you need to like keep them, keep things lively and keep it dynamic, whether it's, whether it's at work, you know, at a, you know, presentation or a meeting or, you know, definitely at home because, you know, you can't get too serious at home. Everyone's too serious out, out and about, right? So you got to, you know, kind of keep it, keep it light for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, mean, I think that's, that's what I was going to say too, is like, uh, I mean, I think first and foremost, it's like, I mean, it's, it's an icebreaker and or like a defense mechanism for me, right? It's built into my, like the way I deal with somewhat uncomfortable situations, it's just like, let's quick come up with something like funny to say, right? Which is probably what most of us do. Yeah. Um, but right, it's like, I mean, I do the same thing. Like if you're just in a room, you kind of just think of it like, like, I don't know, like let's just roll with whatever this is, make a couple of jokes and maybe some people, I don't know, they'll be responsive <laughs> to it. And then like, I don't know, we'll just roll out with it. And it's like, that might be a very important like very important business meeting that you're in there and I'm in, but at the same time, it's the same, it's really the same principle as being at, I don't know, in someone's living room with a couple beers. It's like, I don't know. It's just like, let's just like say some stuff, 
we'll kind of keep the boat pointed in this direction and then we'll just kind of see what happens right and yeah i think it's a real big i know i know um like his daughter doing some um uh, improv stuff but i think that stuff is invaluable i know it's it's almost become a little bit cliche now right like the whole improv thing for like the younger set but i think an invaluable part of social interaction that is is it's just amazing to, to try to use that in everyday life right people become like so concerned about something it's like i don't know just make someone feel like at ease and make a joke and then like you'll be kind of how you can kind of make it go forward yeah. right yeah. yeah 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 that's a huge piece of it i think you know just things like i think about times when i've like interviewed for something like a job or whatever it's like being able to kind of speak off the cuff and just you know feel confident with that is is a big part of that so you just get in that room right like once you're in the room if you can make someone feel comfortable and and, and usually making feel comfortable means like making that a good time of giggle once in a while right yeah just get to that point then then the yeah. rest of it is kind of just yeah it's just i don't know ha <laughs> have you ever uh <laughs> fine <laughs> Have you ever have you ever floated the red balloon or the lead balloon like where you say something that you think is funny and then all and the person's like <laughs> I mean where where have you dropped a bomb and you're like oh ne never all mind jokes all my jokes <laughs> kill so I don't know what you're <laughs> no but I mean and sometimes it's the person like they're not amenable to that kind of humor or they're like okay like. This isn't funny. Uh, what, what's a time where you've said something where you're like, oh, no, forget it. Sorry. Did you follow Billy Bean once? In a, like a like an industry conference? Like oh, he spoke yeah. and then you spoke? Oh, that's, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's funny because I wasn't even thinking of that. But yeah, so I get like, so in what, in summary, and what has become somewhat of a, a theme, like um, so, I work for a big firm, and we have these big retreats, and and uh, in the past couple of years, myself and a partner of two of mine have been asked to like come up and give a presentation, but with a you know they've been saying like give a funny bend to it or something. It's, and a couple of times we had to follow some like fairly like big and or serious people, and of course, as referenced earlier, our humor is extremely sophomoric, and, like, <laughs> like and, and people. <laughs> Like, but the point is like, some people think it's hilarious and some people are like, this is like a national like retreat. Like, why are you guys wearing USA wrestling singlets and running around like, when you're doing it? And I'm like, and the best part is like, you don't have an answer for that. It's just like, what are you? I don't, I don't like, I don't, it wasn't some deep, it wasn't some like deep, like, well, I was really trying to get to the heart of teamwork and like, you know, so. Um, that has happened a couple times professionally and, and, but again, I think like, I, I guess what maybe the improv sort of thought process gets to is like, if you're sort of thinking that way, you kind of expect that, right? You expect mm -hmm. that if, like some people are just going to kind of look at you blankly mm -hmm. and think of a deal if they do, right? Well, all right, I'll just shift this over there or mm -hmm. this joke over here. Maybe they're not into, I don't know, pop culture references, but they're, I don't know into me dancing or something, right? We'll just <laughs> and we figure out some way that we can get to them. I, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I, I agree. I think part of, you know, in, a, like the skill in improv is being able to kind of adjust your, your style and your presentation. So if you start early on in a, you know, presentation or a meeting and you say something that, that just kind of you know, falls flat or, or like, you know, floats like a lead balloon. <laughs> and then you're kind of like, okay, you know, like, no, nope. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's try, let's try something else. Maybe we'll <laughs> this time and uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk through it. I, yeah, I mean, I've, we, we've had, well, and, and then like in the virtual world that we're in now, it, it, it's, it's, I think it's easier to fall flat yeah. because you know, you're only seeing this much of your, of you. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people are not really, you know, they're, they're kind of doing this while you're talking and no one's really focused. And next thing you know, you say something and people are like, wait, 
I'm sorry, what? You know, repeat that. <laughs> you know, they turn and, and then you're like, never mind. Yeah. What I meant to say was, you know. <laughs> And that, and I think that's like you you get into these situations where you yeah it's hard it's hard remotely but I think you get into these situations where like part of the it's hard to explain but part of the fun of it is when things do bomb like think about again bringing the steam up but think about like our improv like some of the funniest memories I have is like things bombing like really yes bombing. and just like or people like the words like people booing and you. Know, now you think back at how ridiculous the thing was. And so yes. for our personal entertainment, it's like hilarious. Like, that, yeah. <laughs> or like I still do that professionally. Remember that time we followed Billy Bean and a bunch of people booed us? That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the last 15 minutes of Saturday Night Live, you know, that it, it is such, it is such a crapshoot. Like sometimes it is the best material ever. Like you get a Brian Fellows, you know, Casey Morgan skit. This bird. Or <laughs> sometimes <Right. laughs> you get like, you know, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, but but you just you just never know and you gotta keep watching until the end. Yeah, there's a there's a great um when Todd was speaking to the YouTube kind of you know metric, uh there there's I saw a great um interview with Seth Myers uh on Howard Stern and he says something about he goes you know what my, my favorite shows or my favorite sketches were the ones that we either totally killed it or we totally bombed and he said because those were the most memorable and he said we we would look back at the bombs and be like oh my god like that was hilarious for us because we knew we were totally bombing and the audience reaction was like Zzz, like yeah. and he said but it was fun for us because you know it was it was memorable. We were like, just go with it. Just. <laughs> so. I think I might that video, a, a video of that interview, because he was talking about how, like, once you're in that, once they would be in those skits. Yeah. Then it was almost like a, like, I don't know how he put it, but it was almost like a sport, right? Like, how, like right. Just <laughs> let's see. Yeah. And now we're, we've been talking about how bad it's going to go and it's going bad. <laughs> Ride this thing and then, like, just be as ridiculous as we can. Like, <laughs> it's over now. Like, <laughs> I will say that there have been times where, I mean, obviously during this year with going through cancer treatment, like I, um, I made light of it a lot because that's that's how I deal with everything is making it funny. But you know, and there's something inherently humorous about like going through this process like you're like really you're gonna this is we're gonna stick me with a needle again like you've tried five times and uh, but like so there i had to do that as like a coping mechanism for sure and um but i did recognize that there were times when i would think something was funny or i'd make a funny comment about it and either nurses or doctors or whatever people would be like Okay. And I was like, no, no, I really, it's okay. Like, this is, this is how I do it. Like, this yeah, is, like, <laughs> like, it's okay. But then I was like, you kind of, sometimes you kind of feel like yourself kind of pulling back. I feel like, you know, the Homer Simpson in the bushes where you're just like, yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> like, was my yeah. sense I, was shot. I get it. Not really yeah. This, this certain position is a little more serious today. Yeah. Um, we, you were kind of talking to this before, but um, do your kids think you're funny? <laughs> <Not really>. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's, it was yeah. funny, like when we were just talking with, with you know, my, my kids today, they were kind of like, I, they both were kind of like, wait, like, I, I know you guys were in a comedy troupe, but I was trying to tell did you actually even have anyone? I was trying to tell them how funny their dad was. And they're like, <laughs> uh, like, you know, they're teenagers, but, you know, it's like, but I think like, yeah, I probably, your, my, my kids are older than mine and mine still think, um, they don't think I'm like necessarily, fun, like they think I'm goofy, like I can be funny because in like a loving, like, oh, 
Like if I run through the living room dancing, they think that that's like, but like <laughs> comedy, they're like, there's like nothing, you know? Yeah. But like, yeah. but like, like I know, like you posted that TikTok with Jillian and she was like, like cracking up. Right. Like, yeah. Like she thought it was hilarious. That's like, true. Yeah. Like, she, so my older daughter just, you know, kind of faked me into acting out a TikTok where there were, it was like a, like a fart sound, you know, like I, <laughs> and, and it was like, like a techno beat though, right? Like, yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. It, just, it looked like, you know, it looked and sounded like a big fart. And, <laughs> and so she thought that was great. And, yeah. you know, so part of being a parent is playing along when, you know, you're the, the joke. So that's, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. that's kind of what I did, but. You know, actually, when, when the kids were growing up, we haven't done this in a long time, but one way that we would kill time, like in a car ride, for example, you know, they'd start getting antsy in the back seat. Mm -hmm. uh, I would start doing the one, the one man improv. Mm -hmm. So I would say, oh, I was, you know, on my way to, you know, to wherever we we're headed. And, and then I, you know, then I would stop and I'd say, and then whatever. And, and they would jump in with an object or, a, you know, something like armadillo. Oh, an armadillo, like, crossed the road in front of me. And so I slammed on my brakes and ran into a, you know, a hippopotamus. And, you know, so we would do that for, like, 20 minutes. And, you know, so then they they would, they thought that was pretty fun. But, you know, that times, you know, you, you move on and now they're, now they're just like this the whole time, right? Like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. I think I tried that once. It's probably based on you telling me that you did it. And I think it was like, and I need a person or a place or something. And my kids are like, why? <laughs> it was like you were Dora and like the kids aren't responding to your questions. <laughs> and they weren't even, they were like, you can get on the phone. They were like, why, why are you doing <laughs> I, That's a great game. I never thought about doing that. I mean, my kids have done, we've done the 10,000 you know, something walk into a bar thing where um, they they have a good time trying to come up with that. They're both, they both like the puns, uh, which I think is, you know, at those ages, like that becomes funny. And, um, and it, it's, yeah, it's fun to see the senses of humor come out in your own kids, like where they kind of realize like what's funny and what's, you know. Uh, yeah. They, they, I, I assume that, that that's, I mean, like we said, that's where they get it, right? At some point. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm happy to hear that your kids have a healthy sense of humor. <laughs> I, would, I would expect nothing less. But You're my big <laughs> <laughs> I know. And well, and then I've probably, I mean, honestly, I've probably showed them more than they should have watched at their ages <laughs> because I was like, you know, Bridget was like four or something and she would be like, a bag of glass. <laughs> like, <laughs> people would be like, what's she talking about? And I'm like, oh, just, I don't know. She's just a great creative thinker. I don't know. <laughs> like, I've only shown her like 50 hours of like old Saturday Night Live. <laughs> like, her, her favorite lately is um, at, at night, she'll always say, can we watch the, and it's Bill Hader, and he he's in a puppetry class with like <laughs> have you seen this one? Uh, who's the guy who writes Family Guy? Uh, oh, Seth MacFarlane. Seth, Seth MacFarlane. So he was the guest host, and he's running a puppetry class. <laughs> and <laughs> it's I've like, never seen it. I know it. I'm <laughs> going. To, I'm going to watch it right when this you is. have to. It's it is honestly one of the best sketches in the world because <laughs> Bill Hader's character is this kind of graveled, um, like Vietnam vet kind of older guy, and he holds up his puppet, and it's literally his doppelganger. <laughs> like it looks exactly like it and so he is there's no creativity he's just talking as a puppet and it, it is it is absolutely fantastic it was just something we just happened to find one night and that's now her favorite so when i think about those like so when i think I, i'm gonna watch the sketch and all i think about when you're describing that is how hilarious they thought that was in the pitch meet like when they <laughs> like I think yes like how much fun they were probably like, but it's a puppet and he looks exactly like him. <laughs> There's probably like 
forty percent of the room that's like, what? It's, a <laughs> it's gonna be hilarious. You guys look like it looks exactly like them. <laughs> do, do either of you ever think like, um, what if what if we had all gone on to do something like that? Do you ever think about that? Like oh, writing for a TV yeah. show or SNL or something or? Yeah, I think about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. Yeah, it's like I, I think about I think about it a lot because like now there's so much content, right? You can see people out there in so many different avenues, right? Like it didn't just have to be SNL. Now there's all these you know cable shows and online outlets and Netflix and streaming outlets and things like that. And I think wow, like there's so many more and, and podcasts, um, and there's so many more avenues for people to kind of get out there and do that stuff and like make their own way right like it's not maybe when we were coming out it's like well all right you're gonna go to um here are your options you're gonna go to second city and mm -hmm. try to get an audition for snl and if that doesn't work out i really i'm really not sure <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, yeah yeah and uh, yeah that was kind of the one venue yeah. mm -hmm. and now i feel like i feel like that like it's like the grinding it out like that is probably the fun, right? Like just kind of getting into that industry and kind of doing that. But I think with those, yeah, you're you're the only one that's picking up the gauntlet here and actually. Doing <laughs> well, you know, uh, like I say, cancer's made me fearless. So I'm like, all right, let's just go with it. <laughs> like, right. I have no problem with people saying no. Um, what about you, Mike? Did you think about that at all? Yeah, definitely. I I think. Well, I agree with Todd. I think you know the the avenues, the channels for kind of making it big now are, you know, so much broader and wider and, and deeper that, you know, you have so many people out there who, you know, other, you know, they have this great opportunity to, to find it, find an audience and get noticed just because they're, you know, doing something funny on TikTok or, you know, mm -hmm. Instagram. And that, that's not a bad thing. I mean, I think that's great because people, you know, there are a lot of funny people out there. There's more than, you know, a dozen funny people in the world. You know, who, yeah. it's more than just the people on Saturday Night Live, right? So yeah. it's great. And being able to see all of these people, um, you know, do do funny things and and just explore all sorts of different you know, ways to be funny is, is great. I, I mean, I, in some ways, I definitely wish I had, tried to do some even like on the weekends you know do like yeah. a, just kind of keep up with a, a class or or even join a, a troop just for fun because i mean i guess life gets kind of serious right mm -hmm. i mean we you know, we all get tied up in our day-to-day -day and i mean especially now i feel like it's i mean it's kind of like groundhog day i'm talking you know i'm telling my my family my <laughs> clients, my coworkers, I'm like, yeah, every day I'm, you know, I get up, I feed the cats, I make coffee, and then I'm sitting, at, you know, for like, totally. for like 10 or 11 yeah. hours, and then I'll sit down for dinner, and then I pass out because I'm exhausted, like, you know, mentally, I'm exhausted, yeah. and I haven't really come up with a good solution for that, so, you know, being able to just, you know, do a little bit of that is, is fun. Yeah, 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 I agree. Um, yeah, I, um, who, I'll pose this as the last question. Um, who who do you like right now? Is there is there a comedian, improv person, podcast, something? What what do you like right now? I wish I could remember the name of this podcast. Um, it's you might you probably know it. It's um, Will Arnett, Sean Hayes, oh, and like yeah. one yes. person. Do you know this, Karen? It's, yes. Um, I'm trying to remember right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it, I mean, it's, it's just them and they bring like a guest on, you know, like yeah. on a weekly basis and they just, yes. you know, all they do is just talk yeah. and, and they get into ridiculous discussions and like I heard, uh, I, I've heard a few, but, you know, of course, Will Ferrell was one of their guests once and I mean, it was just like. <laughs> smart, smartless. What's that? Smartless. Smart, yeah, yeah. That's yes. what, yeah. Okay. Right. I'm just, I was just falling. I mean, dying laughing listening to listening to this. It was great. I mean, I love hysterical. that these guys do this. Like, it don't. A lot of this stuff starts so organically. Like, that's what's cool about the podcasting. I mean, you have people that are very popular that get serious, but it really it starts like this. It starts like as people in their garage. I don't know. Like yeah. a lot of these 
like what's so cool about a lot of these comedic ones are like it seems to be i don't know if this is true it seems to be just like people they're friends with and they think like they like yapping with and like laughing with and then they yeah. let's just do this with headphones on and then they just do the same <laughs> like you're like you've you're broken thought, down oh, my formula right <laughs> like, like it's like thanks like, todd let's just put the, the improv practice on stage and like and that's like that's what they're doing right like yeah yeah who who do you like right now todd yeah that's a hard question um who do i like right now uh i i mean not to not to say the same name for the 90th time but like like bill Hader is hilarious mm -hmm. it, yeah. I, he's kind of serious but his, his um fairy character is awesome yeah. <laughs> but i i just think it's hilarious um I have been watching, like, I'm trying to think of who I've been watching like a lot of lately. Um, I think Bill Burr is pretty funny. I mean, he's a little, yes. like, I think, he, I think he's pretty funny. Although it's like, the thing is like, once you get into these guys, I feel like I'm always like onto the next guy. Right. So like by the time, mm -hmm. like Sebastian met, uh, Metascalco, like the comedian, like, I think he's really funny. I watch like his second steps. So I'm like, gosh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, those are guys I think are funny. Um, yeah, yeah. Did you real quick? I the Bill Burr Saturday Night Live. I have to say, I was like in hysterics. Uh, the Samuel Adams October <laughs> Lager or whatever pumpkin Lager thing was oh. hilarious. Yeah, okay. That was whoever whoever wrote that just just gold just perfect <laughs> like, <laughs> like assume that like stemmed off of his accent that's just what it started <laughs> accent and make a whole skin around yeah all right don't you feel like okay so this is what i always used to say when we were in irish accent was like you just you just take this one little thing and then you just go yeah. like exaggerate the hell out of it like yeah. and then that makes it funny because people recognize it and they're like, oh yes. Like, you know, I mean, I just remember writing the sketch about the dining hall um, one year and that we did and um, and everybody was like, oh my gosh, that's totally how the dining hall is. And it was so exaggerated. I mean, it was nothing like the actual dining hall, but it just, it was just like, you just take a normal everyday experience and just pump it up to like 10 and everyone recognizes it and goes oh my gosh yes like i i've been there i feel that yeah from from their well probably from all their entertainment but certainly from comedy right is to like recognize something about it um and that's what's so funny about it i mean that's yeah. what I, that's what i find like if you ask me what's funny like that's what i find hilarious like just everyday stuff that is mm -hmm to my life or people's lives that I know and like what's funny about it right and and those are and that's what's funny about those guys like like Sebastian and Bill Burr and those guys like that's what's funny about them they do their stand-up it's just I don't know they're just describing like some ridiculousness about their house or something like that yeah. it's funny like I don't know it's just what's funny not some highbrow I mean I have plenty of stuff that I think is funny that's like higher level stuff but I'm much easier you know I was watching a, <laughs> I was watching a movie um last night with bill murray and it was kind of like a serious um ser uh, serious stitch movie oh on the rocks it's like a i think it's like mm. a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like i didn't sorry bill i think the movie was like that awesome but like when bill murray's just talking like i just think it's funny like i just like yeah giggling like it's like what are you laughing at? Like, i don't know he's telling a story i think it's funny <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there are those people that kind of just exude that sort of, you know, they've always just sort of been that way. And 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 you take stuff from like previous moments with them and kind of carry it over. So yeah. um, I would also recommend um, right now I'm a big fan of Nate Bargatze. He's the, he's so, yeah, he's, he's great. He's, he's, I'm so glad you mentioned that. He's hilarious. So he he has a podcast uh, called Nate Land um, that I highly recommend. His um his Netflix he has a Netflix special, The Tennessee Kid that's really funny. Like 
Yeah, he's really funny. He's very yeah. down, like, like <laughs> really funny. My my girls love. He does a whole thing about Common Core math because he has an eight year old daughter, and he does this whole thing where he's like, Go around the like, back. Right. <laughs> Someone comes to your front door, and you're like, No, you you have to come in the back door. Like, well, does the front door not work? Well, no, it works great. I use it. A lot of people use it. <laughs> but you're gonna have to jump the fence and then go around here and then come okay. back. And I was like, and then he goes, and that's Common Core math. But I, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's very talented, and yeah, his podcast is fantastic. Um, so Nate Land, I would check that out. Um, but yeah, so but I agree with you guys on the other people too. So and besides the three of us. <laughs> of course. They're very funny. <laughs> One, two. And then the rest of the people. <laughs> We're like here and here and here. Like yeah. <laughs> You're the only one amongst this trio that's actually doing it. <laughs> well, this is fun. I love doing this. I love connecting with people, but um, I definitely was excited when both of you were on board for this. So thanks so much for being a part of it. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting us. Yeah, it's great. Thanks. To talk.